All right, so this video is going to be about dispensationalism before the 1800s. I don't know if you guys know about, uh, I think it's John Nelson Darby. People believe that he is the first one that created the doctrine of dispensationalism. That is not true. Dispensationalism came before Darby. Some people will say that uh, dispensationalism is a new doctrine that Darby created, but that's not true. Uh, before Darby, you have this person named William C. Watson. William C. Watson, uh, he, in uh, 2015, published a study which he traced a very large number of dispensational concepts, including few cases of full dispensationalism that were published in the English language long before the 1800s. This study was mainly covered by a period of 150 years following the publication of the King James Bible, and the King James Bible came out in 1611. The first time in history the Bible was available in common language for, the, for a low price so people could afford it. So when the King James Bible came out, people were able to afford it, it was a low price, and it was in the common language. And this is very important because for 30 years after uh, this, uh, in the 1640s, commentaries began to appear based on scripture rather than the scholars' teachings. So there was other people that weren't scholars that were having commentaries of their own uh, interpretation of scripture. So, and uh, there are people that hear that, that are anti-dispensationalism. They'll hear that and say, well, yes, but there was no dispensationalism before Watson. So, okay, fine, let's go before Watson. Okay, well, before ancient, ancient Christians writings taught dispensationalism, earliest Christian known to uh, modern scholars that wrote at length Bible prophecy was this person named Papias. Papias, he uh, was not liked by this guy, uh, Eusebius, uh, who wrote in the mid 14th century. He complained about uh, many Christians writers uh, uh, opted a like opinion to uh, Papias Pap or Papias and uh, Irenaeus. He didn't like that. He was mad about these people following their doctrine. So it's kind of like the Pharisees mad at the disciples and other people following the doctrine that Jesus gave. So, yeah. Now, uh, a very old Christian commentary on Bible prophecy that was that has survived to the present day is the last 12 chapters of the very famous five-volume book by Irenaeus, right here, Irenaeus, uh, titled Against Heresies. Uh, this was, uh, which is thought to be published uh, 80, 186, and 188. So that's pretty... Now, the, the oldest uh, Christian commentary on Scripture uh, that was survived to the uh, present day is a commentary on Daniel by uh, this person here, uh, Hippolytus. I hate these names. They make me want to scream. Uh, AD uh, 202 and 211 is when this commentary on Daniel came out by this person here. Uh, believed to have been written between those years, uh, AD 202 and 211. Uh, the Church of the Dark Ages, listen to this, did see fit or did not want to preserve any of uh, Pay Pius and Irenaeus's writings. Uh, we only have uh, 10 fragments from uh, his books before the Dark Ages. So it seems like uh, this information was being uh, suppressed. It was People, it seems like the, in the Dark Ages, in the Dark Ages, uh, people did not want uh, there to be dispensational teaching for some reason. It's kind of weird how that was going on in the Dark Ages. All right, so now, uh, all three of these guys believe in premillennialism and they had commentary on dispensationalism. And all these people were before Darby. They were before Darby. But people say, well, there's no dispensational teaching before that. 
wrong. Jesus taught dispensationalism. Well, I don't believe that. Well, let's go over here and see. Uh, before we get into that, I do want to give credit to uh, James C. Morris. All the information I got is from this book called Ancient Dispensational Truth, ref uh, Refuting the Myth that Dispensationalism is New. I really highly uh, recommend getting this uh, so you can learn about why Dispensationalism has been throughout almost all of time. All right, so let's go to Luke 4. Go to Luke 4. Uh, 14. Luke 4, 14. Luke 4, 14. It's to show you that Jesus divided verses to the right group of people at the right time period. All right. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. And there went out a fame of him through all the re region around about. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been taught, brought up, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. Or Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. So this, this is actually talking about Isaiah, Isaiah 61. Verse 2 is, he's actually quoting verse 1 and 2. He's quoting both verses 1 and 2. But verse 2 is going to be the most important verse for us. This is that verse. So he says, Jesus is speaking here. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and receiving of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book, and gave it again to the minister, and sat down, and the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened at, on him. And he began to say unto them, this day is this, this scripture fulfilled in your ears. That is crazy. But this is, this is even crazier, right? He didn't read the whole verse of verse 2. He didn't read the whole verse. Let's go to, uh, let's go to Isaiah. Go to Isaiah 61. Isaiah 61. In Isaiah 61, uh, we're going to read 1 and 2 and pay attention to verse 2. Okay, so verse 1 first, Isaiah 61. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and op the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. That's what Jesus said, but he stopped after he said that. Listen. Listen. And the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all the mourn. But the day of vengeance of the Lord hasn't came yet, right? That's, that's after the tribulation, correct? So he, so God, or Jesus said this, but he stopped. He stopped right here. And the rest of the verse, the vengeance of the Lord, the vengeance of God, the day of vengeance, he didn't read that because he's dividing the verse to the right time period in the right tr uh, time period for the right group of people. So he divided the day of vengeance of God from this. This has already surpassed, and Jesus said, but this it still doesn't happen today. So one verse, you can divide one section to this time period and the other section to this time period. So when Isaiah wrote this, he, he wrote it, right? The Lord was going to do it during the gospel period, and then God's going to come back after the tribulation way over here. That's a whole bunch of time. 
that is past from that. I don't know, I don't know when Isaiah was written, but that was a very, very long time ago. And then you have Jesus dying on the cross, and then he talks about his return later on. But that has not happened yet. So Jesus is a dispensationalist dividing this from this.